the Exund was not the only vessel he'd sailed to Libya. He revealed that over the last two years, he'd already landed four other Libyan shipments in Ireland. How could four shipments have slipped through the net? British and Irish intelligence had utterly failed to clock Hopkins and his regular commute to Libya. And there were some glaring clues. In January 1986, after Hopkins's first trip, the Irish police had uncovered two arms dumps. And in those two searches were found over 80 AK-47s and other weaponry. Pistols, I think, were also found in those two searches. But one clear issue in all of this is that there was a box which said Libyan army weaponry, or words to that effect, which was quite obvious that they had come at some stage from Libya. It said Libyan armed forces, I think. Well, that's fairly specific, isn't it, Peter? Libyan armed forces. So I do think, and I think we've all accepted, that it was a serious breakdown in uh, our in intelligence gathering system at the time. That's probably that an understatement. Isn't understatement. It? In the course of my research, I've seen an intelligence document. It's marked secret and personal. It reveals the scale of the weaponry that Adrian Hopkins had already landed in Ireland before the interception of the Exxon. The arsenal included 36 rocket launchers, 10 SAM-7s, 26 heavy machine guns, hundreds of rifles, thousands of rounds of ammunition, over 200 grenades, 10 flamethrowers, and enough Semtex explosive to blow things up for years to come. The secret document also reveals that the Libyans paid around 10 million pounds into the IRA's coffers, all in cash. For the British, this translated into more dead soldiers, more dead policemen, and more dead bystanders, and a nightmare that could endure for years.